striking suddenly in the Southwest Pacific, General MacArthur leads combined sea, air, and land forces against the Admiralty Island, just north of New Guinea. A shattering naval bombardment covers the landing as the general observes the action from the flagship. Meeting little initial resistance, U.S. cavalrymen, trained to fight as infantry, storm the beach. Their objective, Momote Airfield, a new base from which to strike new blows at the enemy now being encircled on nearby Rabaul. Landing eight hours after the invasion, General MacArthur inspects American positions and congratulates his troops. To the north, on Eniwetok in the Marshall Islands, mechanized forces win another vital Jap outpost. Islanders huddle for safety under the protection of American guns as the occupation of the island is completed. This is the pattern of war in the Pacific, another victory that puts the Allied forces one step nearer to Tokyo. Generalissimo and Madame Chiang Kai-shek arrive at an air base in southwest China to inspect pilots and planes of a new wing composed of Chinese flyers trained in the United States. Under joint U.S.-Chinese command, these pilots work hand-in-hand -hand with American veterans. Already the wing has seen action, launching smashing blows against enemy shipping along the China coast. Inspecting fighters and bombers of the command, the general is greatly pleased with this new evidence of cooperation between China and her Western allies. Somewhere in California, U.S. Navy patrol blimps are wheeled from their hangars for a test flight. Built to operate at low altitudes and at reduced speeds, the huge lighter-than-aircraft are playing a vital role in sweeping ship lanes of enemy submarines. Today, they soar aloft ten at a time as a cameraman goes along to record the mass flight. Flying in formation, fledgling pilots learn to handle the big blimps under any conditions. Commander Bettner, veteran lighter-than-air pilot, directs the maneuvers as the fleet sails majestically through California skies. American soldiers and women auxiliaries on furlough in India find the colorful shops and bazaars of the East something to write home about. Boarding a trolley car for a sightseeing tour of the city, they visit India's fabulous Taj Mahal, one of the wonders of the world. Built in the 17th century by an emperor in memory of his favorite wife, its classic beauty has stood supreme throughout the ages. Custom demands the removal of shoes when treading the sacred walks of the famous edifice. To Americans thousands of miles from home, this is a rare opportunity to study and appreciate the culture of other peoples. In Italy, a sightseeing train conducts soldiers on leave to view the classic ruins of Pompeii. Here, 15 miles from Naples, Fighting men from the New World visit the citadel of an ancient people. It was the erupting fury of nearby Mount Vesuvius that buried the great city of Pompeii in 79 AD. Today, soldiers pursue the treacherous lava trail 
to view another of the world's wonders. Yes, it's still hot enough to light more than a cigarette. Army sightseers enjoying time off from the grim business of war. The arsenal that is Britain. These are some of the fighter pilots engaged in the greatest air battles the world has ever known. With shells and bullets, they are rewriting Hitler's history in the skies above Nazi Europe. Pilots of the U.S. 8th Air Force Fighter Command, they carry the sky war to the enemy by daylight. The thunder of thunderbolts carry them to battle. Theirs is a long-range mission. The extra belly tanks of fuel will carry them to the heart of Germany's war effort. Rendezvous in the clouds. Above the continent, they overtake American bombers and escort them to the target. The air offensive that is now reaching the Nazi war capital itself. Maneuvering at top speed, they engage the enemy's interceptors. Cameras synchronized to operate with the guns produce unparalleled battle films, unquestionable evidence of the toll American sky fighters are exacting from Goering's Air Force. As the bombers weave through anti-aircraft fire, thunderbolts, lightnings, mustangs go after the enemy with all guns blazing. In desperation, Nazi fighters swarm up to protect their war plans. This is all a part of Allied strategy, to draw the enemy fighters aloft and destroy them one by one. These pictures show vividly German losses mounting day after day. The American fighter squadron wings its way back to Britain, having struck another blow in the Allied campaign to win complete mastery of the air. Every Nazi emblem indicates an enemy plane shot down in combat. These are some of the men who are fighting the greatest air battles in history, the men who are blasting the Nazis from the skies. 